Lesser Light by Matthew Draper Chapter 19 30th December I sent Dylan a WhatsApp message from the train. OMW, on my way. I had woken up as a different person. I felt embarrassed about my behaviour the day before. Some days I descend and some days I ascend. This morning I had woken up with a clear head, body refreshed and ready to go to battle. Yesterday everything inside me had felt tied to the ground dragged down, but today I felt lifted, my chin raised in defiance. On days when my head was refreshed, the events of previous days feel small and unimportant, shrunken to manageable proportions. Maybe I had overreacted to Sebastian asking for my help. The roads were still not brilliant, Rocco told me when I phoned him during breakfast. He said he might not be able to set off again today. He would wait on the weather and let me know, but said I should press on to Edinburgh without him if I wanted to catch the train. Rocco told me he had called ahead yesterday to the hotel where the wedding was taking place, and had changed our arrival date to today rather than yesterday, so we had not lost the first night of our original plan. Getting an early train would set me down in Scotland in time to warn the bride and groom of the incoming Storm Sebastian. The train creaked away from Manchester Piccadilly, slushy hail beating against the windows, out of which I watched the world go by in a blur. We passed a few stations, stopping at each, before I was interrupted. Surprise, bitch! Dylan slid into the seat opposite me. He was drenched from his dash to catch the train from his own station once he knew which timetable I was on. After I had set off from Manchester, he had made sure to get on the same train at Preston, where he had been staying with his girlfriend over Christmas. His grinning face felt like safety. I was anchored by his presence. Rocco said you disappeared, he announced. Apparently my boyfriend had texted for reinforcements. Tell me everything. I wished I had seen him yesterday, while I could still piece everything together. Today... The drama with Sebastian felt so much further away, like it had slipped into the side of my brain instead of roaring at the front. Oh, you know, Sebastian, I tried to downplay it. He always wanted to be the centre of it all. It all. He thinks he can bring Gabriel back, I said quietly. Doesn't seem to realise it would be dangerous. I did not expect Dylan to take it seriously in the way I used to, and Sebastian still did, but I was honestly surprised when he laughed out loud. Maybe it would be dangerous if Gabriel had ever been real. His words stung. I understood parts of our past were messy or misremembered. Lizzie had explained it clearly, but Dylan's outright denial still hit me between the ribs. Realistically, I might have said the same if someone asked me directly, yet the punch of it took my breath away. He had said it casually, like it cost him nothing, while he was fishing through his backpack for a packet of Haribo. Leaving the words hanging between us, he tipped the sweets over and shook them loose, opening the packet upside down. He always said it was easier to tear open upside down. I was still stuck on what he had said before. You can't say he wasn't real, I insisted. Not after everything we went through. Dylan began to shake his head, but reconsidered, nodding instead. Sure, a lot of what we experienced was real. I've thought a lot about it. The abuse was real, the early mornings, the hard work, and I've tried to tell you for years we were getting ripped off by Morgan. Had he? But the Gabriel stuff was bullshit. The Gabriel stuff. I said, I know not everything was real, some of the miracles, but... You don't remember the stuff? I didn't know what stuff he meant exactly, but for me, the stuff meant the feeling, 
the moments of absolute connection we used to share between us when accessing Gabriel's power for ourselves. Not the miracles, which I knew we had maybe exaggerated the impact of in real life, but the feeling while sharing them had been ecstasy, and we had both experienced it. We all had. You and me and Sebastian, we accessed that other level because we believed. But Sebastian, it was too late to try and recreate it now. He shouldn't try. We couldn't all be dragged back into G's world against our will. Dylan frowned. Harry, I... The last six years have been hell, I pushed past his attempt to interrupt the flow of my thoughts. You know as well as I do what it's like to be stuck in the in-between place, where some of it is buried, some is unclear. Finding someone else, anyone else who remembers, makes such a difference. Somebody else who experienced the level of belief. I didn't believe. He had set down the bag of sweets, giving our conversation his full focus. I never believed in Morgan's bullshit about Gabriel. What? It was so obviously all made up. The. I never saw Gabriel like you did. I never spoke the angelic language. Hell. I'm sorry, I should have told you. I should have told you sooner. What the hell? I refused to accept his words. If we had not been sat opposite one another on the train, I would have backed away. The train kept moving. You did! You felt it, I saw you feel it. What we had, the others were jealous of. When we prayed together, it was lightning. That wasn't belief. We had a spark. When you touched me, the light of Gabriel shone so bright. We both burst out laughing or got thrown across the room. You're telling me you didn't feel the light in those moments? Harry, I didn't feel light of Gabriel or any of that bullshit. I've been trying to tell you. I felt love. I was dizzy. Was this a train or a roller coaster? I felt my stomach flip. Love? We never dated. We never... Dylan was earnest as he caught hold of my arms, as if I was slipping away. He grabbed my wrist. The tip of his thumb touched against my pulse. My fingers were caught in his sleeve. We didn't have to, he said. Dating was so messed up in that place. I didn't want that for us. You were too pure. I loved you so intensely, and I know you loved me too because I could feel it. That was enough for me. I thought it was enough for you too. You loved me? In a week of earth-shattering revelations, this was apocalyptic. I remembered our first day at St. Michael's, spotting him for the first time, standing out in the congregation like a spotlight had lit him up. This whole time? I love you now! I don't just love people for a while. I love them completely. Not this. But, but what about his girlfriend, who he was seeing, who he spent Christmas with? Erin? I love her. It's different. I think we're going to move in together. I'm sorry, you look confused. He tried to explain himself. My ears were ringing. I've got a heart too big to love one person at a time. But you were always here. He slapped his palm against his chest. I was confused, and then I was cross. This whole time you thought Gabriel wasn't real and I was a fool for believing in him. I skipped straight over the love thing to defend something I didn't understand. I never thought you were a fool. Not once. He reached towards me, but I brushed his hand away. He was still speaking. Your belief was so strong. Strong enough for both of us. You took me with you. To that supreme and magic space, or whatever it was you believed. You carried me there with you. No. You don't get to coast on my experiences. You experienced it too. I needed someone else to have felt what I felt. To have experienced what I went through. Otherwise... What about the night that... Harry, I only experienced our connection. And I loved it. Who cares about Gabriel? Not me. I pressed my thumb against the ring on my index finger. I cared about what was real. I did not need to be told I was crazy. Not by someone I cared for this much. 
Not when the safety of our friendship group depended on my stepping up and using the powers I only had because of our connection to Gabriel. Not after everything we had lost because of him. Oscar. I blurted the name. I had become angry through the course of this conversation. I spat the name like blood during a boxing match. You were there the night we lost him. You saw us lose him. I didn't see him. Dylan's words washed over me as he shook his head, remembering. It was a prayer night at St. Michael's, right? I remember. I was happy to be there with my church family. With you. The music, the chanting, the dancing and prayers, but I never followed them. Not really. I was just with you guys. Especially you. You always took me with you when you prayed. Your faith was infectious and I was fascinated by you. You were perfect to me. Everything blurred out compared to you whenever we were together. It wasn't unusual for the room to disappear and the floor to drop out from under me, under all of us. His face crumpled slightly. His eyelids fluttered as he recognised the weirdness in that situation as he spoke it out loud. He started again. His words were a rush of air filling the space between us. We were so tired back then, Morgan had us all in exhaustion. I think I must have fallen into a dream. With you. We were surrounded by darkness. It was the blackest night I had ever experienced, except you... You were glowing. But you always glowed when we were together. Just as suddenly we were back, back in the room, and everyone was... Were they afraid? They grabbed their coats and went home. No one was speaking. They, someone, found Oscar. The next day, they found Oscar in the morning, but none of us saw him that night. He was not there. This was too much information at once. I had to get out of here. I had to get off the train. Where were we? I looked out the windows for an escape. We were slowing, approaching a station. I'm not having this. My brain was a black hole, sucking information like a vacuum. I felt the seat beside me, and the table as I pressed my palms against it. Our legs tangled as we both tried to stand up, to move out at the same time. I scooped up my backpack from the seat beside me, grabbing the shoulder strap. I needed to get off the train right away. Dylan followed me down the aisle. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but heard the train announcer let us know where we were. Next stop, Lancaster. I was panicking as realisation hit me. It was me. I had dragged them all there. Not Gabriel. Me. I had to wait for the round button beside the train door to light up green before I could press it and escape. I turned back to Dylan as the doors of the train whooshed open. Don't follow me. I need to think. From the platform, Dylan was just a silhouette in the doorway. He had said he loved me. It was his love that fueled our connection. And that connection had dragged him up with me to the moon. Lesser Light is an online event. Head to lesserlight.blog to join in the comment section or share this story on Facebook, Twitter, Hive or your favourite social media platform. The Lesser Light paperback is available from lulu.com or other booksellers or you can download the ebook now. But remember, no spoilers until New Year's Day. The story is fictional, but if the elements about trauma, cults or recovery have affected you, you can find helplines at lesserlight.blog.